Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. In this video I will be reviewing the Imperial Armour Volume 2 Second Edition War Machines of the Adeptus Astartes. It's a book from Forge World, it'll set you back about £57, something like that. And it came out a good three years ago or so, and it was a direct replacement for the first edition of the book, which for obvious reasons wasn't called the first edition, but it does look like this, Volume 2 Space Marines and Forces of the Inquisition. This book had been around for about a decade before they replaced it. It might be the case that this book is around for a decade, but the amount of things that they've released, especially in the last two or three years, I wouldn't be surprised if another refresh of this book will be released in 2018, 2019. That's just my guess though. It's a similar number of pages, and um, this is 250 Five, and this one's 256, 57. So they're a very similar number of pages. This one is like a glossy like feel to it. This one is sort of a matte feel to it with the, the writing slightly shiny. And the same for the tops, what the spines look like. This is a flat spine, that's sort of like quite a curved one. This one says War Machines of the Adeptus Astartes, and this one actually says Space Marines and Forces of the Inquisition. And then the reverse, that's quite large print, and this is a little bit smaller, but it also gives you the index. And in this book, you've got everything from land raiders, battle tanks, battlefield support, heavy tanks, aircraft, dreadnoughts, assault vehicles, support weapons, and some war machines for... Uh, Grey Knights, Inquisition and Adepta Sorites, uh, or Sisters of Battle. That doesn't have an index on, on the back, as you can see. Who is this book really for? Well, it's really for people who like Warhammer 40,000, they like Space Marines, they like Space Marine vehicles, but they want to get some Forge World vehicles too. So the book is really for people who love the Forge World models, part of the Horus Heresy, but want to include them in their games of 40k. The rules in this book here are for the Horus Heresy, so games of, of 30k. But the rules in this book for these machines are obviously for 40k. It's a lovely book, really nice feel to it. I thought it would be quite big to sort of like move around and uh, read in bed and things like that, but actually it's, it's not too bad at all. In my unboxing, I said that's a lovely picture and I've read every single page of this book and loved every second of it. So if you love Space Marines and Forge World models and Space Marine tanks and you wanna learn about the lore, this is definitely the book for you. Even though it came out just a few years ago, it still has some very nice units in and uh, some really nice backstory to, to all the all the units and the models. So it gives you some backstory of vehicles and the, the deployments. It gives you some glories of Space Marines and their vehicles. And then it goes on to specific vehicles themselves. So Land Raiders talks to you about how Land Raiders sort of came to be. Primarily it was Land's Raider because it was archaeologist Ark and Land, his great expedition, and it's the same for the Land Speeder, which was Land's Speeder. So he sort of discovered them. They were used in the Horus Heresy quite a lot. And so some lovely pictures and backstory, and I really like these, how sort of te from an engineering point of view, how technical they are. They explain it as if it's an actual vehicle somewhere. A nitro ammonium cooling system, omnidirectional gene-coded control column. So it numbers all the different parts of the tanks and it goes through, and it's like this throughout the whole book. Uh, different patterns, the Proteus look, the Achilles. This is the type of illustrations and things that one should expect in the Games Workshop books. Not this, which sort of like looks really cartoony, but, but that. I mean, both of these books, they come out from the same HQ. They're both printed in China. That's what you should be going for, not, not this. This book here, the Imperial Armour book, it has just the right combination of technical drawings, lovely pictures and action pictures and text and rules. It has a lovely harmony with all those things. Not like the Games Workshop books that have a lot of a lot of rules that are sort of with, with the pictures and then a huge amount of sort of diorama sets and then a little bit of story segmented. And it's not like the Horus Heresy books whereby you have pretty much no pictures whatsoever. Um, you just have sort of rules 
and it's very dry and occasionally you get a little bit of artwork but no adverts no big battles just it's mainly rules and and some some graphics from from time to time this in my opinion is the perfect sort of harmony between all those all those mediums so we go through the book again so if you like space marine tanks and you like land raiders you know it's just fascinating just reading about them and then it gives you the rules as well i mean some of the rules might be a little bit out of date now because obviously we've had the new Taurus heresy book and that explored different rounds for the achilles for instance but they will probably have put some fluff in as to why you can't use different rounds and then land raider prometheus with the heavy bolters predator tanks again lovely artwork and even demos predators um, so it gives you all the rules and things. A lot of these models are what's called Relic of the Armoury, which basically means that you can field one in the primary detachment of Space Marine Army. If you've got more than one model with that rule, then you've also got to include a, a Keeper of Relics purchased as an HQ choice. And a Keeper of Relics is Master of the Forge in Space Marine Army, Interrogator Chaplain in Dark Angels, and a Reclusiarch in Blood Angels, Room Priest in Space Wolves. So you can take them, but you've got to pay some kind of points tax really. Predator with a heavy con conversion beamer at up to 72 inch range with strength 10 AP1. Well, it's 140 points. It's, it's a lot of points that you pay, but that could just turn the tide of a battle. I mean, there it is again, look, lovely. And probably one of the best things to purchase points wise is this relic Sakaran battle tank because it's got 13 all round. It's got the accelerator cannon, which is six shots, strength seven, which are rending. You can give it las cannons. Again, relic of the armory. And then battlefield support. Got everything from whirlwinds. They talk about Hyperios. Yeah, there it is, Hyperios, which has got this um, Hyperius missile launcher. And then the Scorpius, again, relic of the armory. Um, very damaging unit though. And talks a little bit about Vindicators. Fellblade. It's a huge amount of points. But you can essentially use it for your 40k army. But it is a super heavy uh, Lord of War. Even the Typhon you can use with its Dreadhammer Siege Cannon. I think coming up is the Cerberus Tank Destroyer which is the, the tank on the front of the cover. Uh, which has got that crazy neutron laser it's really excellent against other super heavies but even if you wanted to fire it at a land raider you'd mainly target other super heavies with it because if you penetrate that super heavy it can only fire the snapshots which isn't too bad if if it's got twin link weapons and things but that's uh, quite damaging especially with the range the 72 inch range not not many things have the 72 inch range so it introduces a lot of that weaponry in this that neutron laser it introduces the conversion beamer spartan great thing about that is obviously it can carry 25 models not 15 or 20 but 25 which is more than a storm eagle it's only five off a thunderhawk believe it or not thunderhawk can carry 30 this thing can carry 25 which is insane 25 space marines that talks about the thunderhawk gunship I means still an absolutely lovely model quite pricey and then you still have to pay for the for its turbo laser destructor so you're looking at 775 points to almost 800 points so i think that's actually more than a, a warhound titan for armor of 12 12 and 10. i think in the legion astartes book it can upgrade its rear armor to be void sealed or something and i think it can then have 12 all around because at this point in time storm eagle actually has better armor got 12 all around there yes it's got you know less than half the hull points but still 12 all round versus the 12 12 10 transporter again you could take one of those but it is lord of war i honestly don't think it should be a lord of war yes it should be super heavy flyer but a lord of war i mean you're normally only allowed one and to use it on that like i said is when you could use it on other things storm eagle like i said in the unboxing i know it's 70 points more for the uh, rock pattern but those missiles, four missiles, that strength eight, that twin linked, they'll definitely make their, their money's worth. Let's just say that you just waste all four missiles on normal space marines. That's still 60 points that it's just killed. That it's going to hit them. And if they're out in the open, which they may well be because you're a flyer, that's 60 points there that you just wiped out. So it's already made its 
its points up, not to mention all of the other weapons and things. And then you've got the fire wrapped gunship. The big difference with this and the the 30k one is that it doesn't have the auto cannons, which is a bit of a shame and it doesn't even give you the option of having them. Uh, so if you're going to get one, I personally just magnetize the weapons and then you can use it in 30k or or 40k and just interchange them if, if you need to. There's the little Storm Eagle, Sace this assault ram. Nice armor though, front and side is 13 uh, and the rear is 11 and it can only carry 10. Its usage is I'd say quite limited at the moment when you've got other options that are just do things better. It's quite cheap points wise though, uh, it's a lovely looking model. Land speeder, of course there's some lovely land speeders in here and you can use your, your 30k one which I've said before it's cheaper than the than the Tempest but you get inside 11. It's a shame because it had a special rule or it has sorry it has a special rule in the 30k book I think it's something to, similar to the afterburner where you have to roll a six to hit or something like that but it doesn't have have it in this book. Nice land speeder that's sort of impervious to smaller arms fire. Drop pods nothing much has changed with them and Dreadnoughts I found very interesting because obviously that's an ironclad but they've got it under the Chaplain Dreadnought ironclad or siege Dreadnought same thing and the Chaplain Dreadnought already comes with a multi melter but you can have a plasma cannon which is what mine has and I may well still take a flamestorm cannon because in this book at least it's strength 6 AP3 which is great which is what you want it to be however the siege Dreadnought that already has a flamestorm cannon but it can't take an extra claw or anything like that so it comes with a salt drill with built, he built in heavy flamer and a flamestorm cannon but it can only replace its flamestorm cannon with a multi melter that's the only option it's got so this one here which is a siege Dreadnought that can't be allowed because there it's got the siege drill or whatever you want to call it with the flamer but it can't have that claw which I think is really very odd and then you've got a mortis pattern dreadnought which has got the two missile launchers and then you can change it and it's got this he helical targeting array which means it's obviously sky fire and interceptor so very very damaging for 115 points or so well it'll be 125 with the auto cannons. And there's the chapman dreadnought I quick kitted out with a twin link last cannon that's the Siege Drill, that's the Siege Dreadnought. And then Contemptors. Love the Forge World Contemptors. Absolutely lovely. Definitely be getting some. And you can even get the Contemptor Mortis, which I'll I'll definitely be getting. Here's some Dreadnoughts for you, Contemptors. Then it talks about the Rhinos and the chassis and the Command Rhino with this orbital bombardment that you've got. And the Infernum pattern, I read it up and it is just the same as a normal Razorback but with a, with a multi melter. Some lovely pictures. And the support weapons, just the tarantula, gives you options. They're very cheap, really. Two wounds and toughness six, not too bad. And then the weapons battery, as we all know, got your toughness seven and your two wounds. You can only have quad heavy bolters or laser destroyers. And obviously, we know that there's there's thunderfire cannons and things out there. And look, graviton cannons there you go which says access denied so we, we can't be using the graviton cannons but we can use those two which isn't too bad especially the uh, the quad heavy bolter which is six shots twin linked for 40 points that's quite quite nice in my opinion and then it talks about grey knights and the inquisition so the, La the grey knights land raider which is a lovely lovely bit of kit lovely bit of um, resin that they've got for it with the flamers well, the um, Flamestorm Cannons. Like I said before, I'd be interested in getting one of them for my Grey Knights some point. And the Dreadnoughts look, look lovely too. Yeah, that one. Lovely, lovely model. And then you've got the Thunderhawk. Just got this reinforced Aegis thing against Psychic Powers. And then you've got a Inquisitorial Land Raider Prometheus. So you've, you've got Prometheus... Prometheus was earlier on, but this one is the Inquisitorial, and it's got this these extra like, little options, which is a warp stabilization field and a true silver armor, uh, which sound pretty awesome. And then you got rhinos, chimeras, which I do have one, and because I've got the little extras from the Death Watch, I can actually put the Inquisitorial symbol on them now on my chimera. Uh, the Valkyrie. 
Couldn't really see much of the difference with them. And then Sisters of Battle. It's got the Immolator, the Exorcist, and the Repressor. So they had the Exorcist and the Immolator without any rules, which I, which I found a bit odd. But then you've got the Repressor with the rules. It has a Coppola mounted Storm Bolter and a Pindle mounted Heavy Flamer. So there's a Heavy Flamer, just looks like a small flamer to me. And there's the Coppola Storm Bolter. And it can carry 10 models, so pretty nice. And you've got all the special rules like the Atomantic Shielding, and the Relics of the Armoury special rule, the Legacies of Glory. You can purchase special upgrades depending on the last sort of 10,000 years. It's with all the vehicle summary, their armour, their ballistic skill, things like that. And also the weapon summary with their little extra special rules on the right hand side. And finally, some small rules about apocalypse, destroyer weapons, super heavy flyers, and so on, and super heavy vehicles, and some blast markers. And then just some adverts for some of the books that they do. I remember Typhon on the back. So, as I said before, uh, this book is primarily for those who really like the Forge World tanks and models and have a 30k or Horus Heresy army already and they want to use them in their their 40k armies would i ever use like my sakaran in a 40k game yeah i probably would i wouldn't go overkill though and just bring a fell blade i'd probably just use a, a demos pattern predator build the sort of narrative game around it rather than bring in as many sort of relics of the armory as possible and um, it's just nice to have the 40k rules as well if you did want to field them if you want them in your chapter things like that that's the end of my review thank you for watching the emperor protects